Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. In this Back to Power Basics, we're going to introduce the Hardware Management Console. The Hardware Management Console can be used to control all of the Power 6 range except the blades, the JS12 and JS22. At the lower end, you can also use the Integrated Virtualization Manager as an alternative. Now, assuming you've got your HMC delivered, we'll assume that you know how to put a PC together or a simple 19 inch rack server connected to the console and across the computer room you have your power 6 based machines well clearly we need to connect these together and we're going to make a private HMC to service processor network this is not for users to log into and use and we should in fact get one of the HMC's to run DHCP and allocate the IP addresses for the service processes as they start of course don't make both HMC's a DHCP CP server or things will get very confusing. On the HMC you can choose the range of addresses that it will serve out but it is a private network you don't normally connect this to your backbone hub within your computer room. Then you also want to access the HMC from your desk and this could be either a sort of public within your company or a systems administration type network. To that you're going to connect your workstation and from there you're going to use a browser to connect to the HMC. And what you'll see on the browser is exactly the same as you'll see on the console of the HMC. Once we have this set up, we don't need to go to the computer room ever again unless we want to connect more network or SAN devices to the adapters in Ampower 6 based machines. So, what is the HMC like to actually use? Okay, let's make a start. I'm using my browser here, this is Firefox 3. I log on to my HMC, it happens to be called HMC7. It gives me a little bit of information about what's going on. There's some events and some attention LEDs on the machine. And I'll just click here to start up a console to it. It's going to ask me to log in. It creates a new console window that's uh, as big as my screen. I'll shrink that down now. There we go, we've logged in. This is the welcome pane here we can already very quickly see the HMC version we're running here and we'll have a quick look around this user interface. Up here we have our general menu systems as we click on buttons here this will change the contents of the main panel and there's some warnings and attention indicators down here for things that HMC thinks we need to look at. We'll start from the bottom and work up. I'll scroll this window down so we can see the details here I'm using a fairly small screen here to make the movies play well. Here are the machines we're actually connected to via this HMC. There's five of them. There's four Power 6 and this one here is a Power 5 machine. We can see here the firmware level of the machine, 320. This one is a Power 5 based machine, so it's on a different firmware stream. So this is 320 version 40. From here we can update the HMC and we can do that over the network or via a DVD. Or we can click on a particular machine and ask to um, change the level of firmware on it or upgrade it um, or change the version we're actually booting from. We'll have a different movie that goes into the details of this. If we go here to service management, at the top we have events that are happening on our machines and at the bottom we have the call home service. This call home sounds like a telephone but it's actually done over the network usually. This is where the HMC will collect errors on the machine and inform IBM over the network of these problems. And using these uh, options here we can set this up so that it happens all automatically. In fact if there are problems on our machines here in London, we tend to first know about it because the hardware desk at IBM phones us up and says, do you know there's something wrong with the fan in this machine? And we usually haven't realized it by the time they actually phone us back. Above here, we have these uh, events on the machine and we could go and have a look at them for ourselves. It's asking which would we like to select down, but let's just go for all of them. And here we can see on my machines, and which individual machine it is, uh, these events. 
These all happened mostly at least on two particular days. These are demonstration machines. We were probably unplugging the network and it's giving us lots of warnings here that it's lost the connection to the actual Power 6 machines. If we go up to the next one now, the HMC management tasks, here we can see typical operations that we do on the HMC itself. We can shut it down for example, we can back up the data on it, and we can connect to the make changes to the network. So let's have a look at that. We can see the different uh, networks we're actually connected to. Here's actually the uh, host name. And here we see the two different networks. The first one up here, this is the DHCP network that we connect to our Power6 service processors. And this is the public network that I'm actually using to access the interface here. We do other things in here like setting the time and date and we can set some user interfaces. We can switch off some of these panels if we don't want them. Down below we have more administration tasks. We can create a new user and this is how I created this NAG user and set passwords, certificates and those sorts of things. We can also switch off some features if we don't want them or don't like them. For example we can switch off here whether we can allow a remote console to somebody logged in as I have here over the network. And we can stop them using web browser at all if we wanted to. They would have to go to the HMC and its uh, screen and keyboard to actually do any work. I'll ignore system plans for now. This is the new way that we can connect to the machine and set them all up in advance. We use a tool to build a system plan and then we can implement that from the HMC and build our machine very quickly and accurately. Let's look at server or system management here. And we'll look at the servers in particular. Here's the name of all our machines. Normally they come up with, this is the, uh, the serial number of the machine here. You can call your machines anything you actually like. We tend to use uh, something that reminds us of which machines which. So these first three are Power 6 520s, this is a Power 6 550, and this is a Power 5 550Q. Now with these panes, this is where we spend most of our time in here. If we click on a particular item here, this first server, we'll find, let me just bring this up for a second, we'll find now we have an extra button here and if we click on this these are the operations and configuration changes we can actually make to this machine. The same options are available up here, tasks, and we have the same details down here as well. You can decide which you like. I prefer clicking on this button here as I know that I'm directly going to change this item here. Some options we can actually do on more than one machine at a time. And we'll find that these task lists will change depending on what is the common operations that we could do across a group of machines. Now a quick dodge here, uh, this panel here actually takes quite a lot of time to come up and if we go to HMC management we go to user interface settings and we switch off this task pad. Now if we go back up to servers and we can see it's displayed a lot quicker. In the next movie we'll turn our attention to logical partitions, creating them, allocating resources, starting and stopping them.